Do you think 3D printing is just a novelty with no real use? In this video, I've got five ways that 3D printing can be incredibly useful. A criticism I often hear leveled at 3D printing is that it's just a novelty and it's just for making useless knickknacks. In this video, I'm gonna try and convince you otherwise if that's your opinion. It's true that 3D printing can be used to generate items that are seemingly useless to the people who didn't manufacture them. But remember, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Even so, I feel that 3D printing can be incredibly useful. So I'd like to share with you five ways to try and convince you of my line of thinking. Let's start with number one, and that's that 3D printing can help prevent waste. The most popular plastic used by 3D printers is PLA. And the good thing about that is it's a bioplastic made from corn and starches. This also means that it should be biodegradable. In real life, outside of industrial composting facilities, it can take many hundreds of years to decompose, but that still beats traditional plastics. You can also recycle your waste prints at home. I've done a series on building a shredder, but you can also use an inexpensive kitchen blender to achieve exactly the same thing. The recycled filament chips can then be melted down in an oven and turned into sheets of plastic, or you can even 3D print your own machine for making new filament. If all of that is too hard, you can now buy filament that's completely recycled, including this reform PLA, which I'm using for some of the prints in this video. One of my favorite uses of 3D printing is to upcycle existing products and prevent them from going to landfill. When I started this channel, I needed studio lighting, but all I had was these garage work lights. The problem with these is that the light that they produce is far too harsh. With a 3D printed part that held a regular sheet of paper, I was able to design and build a diffuser, which I've used on every video on the channel to date. This stopped the existing lights from being wasted and saved me the purchase cost of dedicated studio lights. Another example is when I recently tried to upgrade my monitor stands, but inadvertently bought a stand that wouldn't fit on my desk. I designed the simplest of brackets to interface my studio lights with the monitor stand. This part doesn't exist by any other means, and the end result are adjustable brackets for my studio lighting, rather than the monitor stand sitting in storage collecting dust. In fact, simple hooks and brackets are one of the best uses of 3D printing. This one tidies gym equipment, and these ones securely hold power boards as well as power supplies on the underside of my benches. One more, I recently had a tripod with broken legs, but the top section was still good. I designed and 3D printed the simple bracket to connect it to some tube, and then I designed and 3D printed a miniature set of legs, complete with rubber feet to not mark my table. I've now got a very useful miniature quick release tripod made from parts that otherwise would have gone to the tip. One more point on those 3D printed knickknacks. Anything made in this manner will be produced without any wasteful packaging, so prevalent in existing consumer goods. 3D printing can be a hobby in itself, but it can also accentuate your existing hobbies. I am a huge car nut, and previously I featured several electric drift vehicles. Building up this drift trike was an early series on the channel, and it was so much fun that even my wife decided to rip it up at the local school. What you might expect to be a metal fabrication build benefited from 3D printing, such as this piece, to tidy up the ignition key. I've also featured this electric cart on the channel in the past, and it too has multiple 3D printed parts, such as this quick change battery cage, and this clip-on trolley, which makes it possible to move the go-kart around out of my trailer and to wherever I'm driving it. Over the last year, I've been building up this VR sim driving rig. You might have guessed it, but it's got a lot of 3D printed parts, such as this snap-in keyboard holder, these brackets that hold up the fans that simulate the wind in your hair, a mount for a VR tracker for motion compensation, custom brackets to hold USB powered hubs, and these mounts for rumble motors that come on to simulate the brakes locking up. All of these hobbies are now more enjoyable thanks to 3D printing. 3D printing opens the door to manufacturing as you can make tools and other manufacturing equipment. We'll look at three examples, the first being the need to find the absolute center of this surface to drill a hole. The correct tool for this job is called a center finder, and if you own a 3D printer, you can make one for free. 
In this case, I didn't even need to design the file myself. It was on Thingiverse and the job is done. Let's say I need to drill some holes in this piece in precise locations and without the drill slipping sideways. It's very quick and easy to model up and 3D print a template fit for this purpose. This same method would work equally well for joinery on a timber project. After a little cleanup, the holes are drilled perfectly on the first go. Let's step it up and say that we own a 3D printer, but we want to expand into CNC machining. Only trouble is CNC machines are out of our budget. Well, previously I've made a series on the 3D printed CNC from V1 Engineering. The model I made was the Lowrider 2, and as the name suggests, the majority of it is 3D printed. For the rest of the components, including hardware and electronics, you can buy those in a bundle from their web store, or alternatively, source them individually if you can do it cheaper. I managed to build mine at under US $500, which is really cheap for a CNC router. It's capable of engraving into timber, cutting out profile pieces from plywood. The same goes for acrylic, and with a little bit of trial and error, you can even machine soft metals like aluminium. Remember that this massive expansion in manufacturing capability was made possible by owning a 3D printer. In an age of ever increasing screen time, 3D printing can help you explore the natural world. A year or so back, my daughter and I discovered the Ants Canada channel and we were completely hooked. Rather than just binge watch, I used 3D printing to take things a step further. I did some research, jumped on CAD and designed this 3D printed modular ant formicarium. I printed and then assembled the parts, and then as you do these days, I ordered a small ant colony off the internet. Soon our ladies moved into their 3D printed formicarium and got to work tending to brood and growing their colony. If you'd like to have a go at this one yourself, the video is linked in the description. How about astronomy? And this is some footage I shot of the moon on my telescope. Well, 3D printing has helped me explore this as well. My telescope has this base piece that's meant to hold lenses, but not many of them fit and they're not particularly secure. Seeing an opportunity, I jumped into CAD and modeled up this replacement piece, but also these holders, the exact size I needed to hold my lenses, designed to be printed from soft TPU so it wouldn't damage them. Assembly went as planned, with the soft TPU having just enough flex to fit in perfectly. So perfectly that when you remove an eyepiece, it automatically pulls off the bottom dust cover and reapplies it as you put the eyepiece back in. These delicate parts are now held safely in position in close proximity to the rest of the telescope. I'm definitely still an amateur, but that blob with stripes there is Jupiter. And if we turn up the exposure, we can also see three of its moons. Finally, 3D printing can be educational and is amazing at creating one-off educational tools. There's a lot of resources out there for teachers, but quite often the costs are ridiculous. Rather than spend a thousand dollars on a bridge building kit, I used some old scrap plywood and then 3D printed this custom truck to hold some weights that I already had. The kids could then build bridges out of paper and cardboard, adopting a process that truly was trial and error. There was truly some abominations, but eventually the concept sunk in and the kids absolutely loved it. Another similar project was this class-made marble machine. It had many 3D printed components before the kids added their own sections, created with recycled materials and with the theme of their own choosing. This was one of my favorite projects I ever did as a teacher. 3D printed mounts for a DC motor and then a special top. A piece of correctly trimmed cardboard would then get mounted on top, the motor turned on and the kids would pour paint as it was spinning. This was a very popular project because it let the kids be creative, get a little bit messy and learn about things like inertia and centripetal force. A bonus was the end artworks were cool enough to hang up on the classroom wall. As a teacher, I couldn't have done any of these projects without 3D printing because the parts were either too expensive or just didn't exist. This last one comes courtesy of my patron Simon. He helps at a volunteer archaeology site that excavates 10,000 year old artifacts. They're too precious to be handled by the public in a museum, so Simon has been 3D printing replica headdresses for visitors to pick up and wear. He's also creating digital representations of excavated pottery, recreating the form from small fragments and then 3D printing a model for museum guests to see the original shape. 
this educational experience possible thanks to an enthusiast and his 3D printer. So that's my best uses, but I'd like to know yours. Please take the time to go down into the comments and post your most valuable uses for 3D printing and share with the community. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.